Hello, 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 my amazing first grade artists. Today we're going to be starting a brand new art project. So let's take a look at my example that I have here. So I see a nice long piece of string. I even see some sewing on the sides. I see some pictures and I even see something that can open and maybe hold things inside. What we are starting this week, my friends, is Native American parfleche pouches. So with that being said, let's go ahead and find out what our learning target is. I'm going to start first. Remember, repeat it after me. Here I go. I can create cultural art. So remember, there are many different types of cultures. And specifically, this culture that we are learning about will be the Native American culture. Remember, Native American are the people that used to live here before many European people came and settled the Americas. Some examples of Native American tribes that lived right here in Wisconsin include the Potawatomi, the Oconomowoc, and even the Ojibwe tribes. Now, now that we found out a little bit of background information about our pouches and our learning targets, I want to give you friends the reason why we're creating some Native American art. Just last week was actually Indigenous Peoples Day. And Indigenous people are another way that we can say Native Americans or Native Indians, because Indigenous people implies that they were the people that were here first and living here in our great country. So, because we just celebrated Indigenous Peoples Day, that is the reason why we are also making some Native American art and celebrating Native Americans and their culture. So, now that I've given you some background information about what we're learning this week and next week, my friends, let's go ahead and find out what art supplies we need. So, my amazing first grade friends, here are the things that we need to start our Native American parfleche pouches. First, I have my yellow art folder, and this will be the last project that you have in our first art folder. I also have a pencil and scissors. And next week, my friends, not today, but next week, I will need some sort of coloring utensils, whether that might be crayons or markers. I would not recommend using paints on this project, though, okay? So, because I don't need these ones today, I'm going to push them off to the side. I'll know that I'll need them next week. And now I need to go ahead and open up my yellow art folder. If you have your yellow art folder and materials ready, you can go ahead and open your folder with me, my friends. Because inside should be the two things that I need as the last part of my first art folder. I have a long piece of string, and I have this brown piece of paper that's been folded and has some holes punched in the two sides, and that's going to help make my pouch. So now that my yellow art folder is empty, I am going to need it one more week, so I will set it aside, and then the week after that we can decide what to do with it, my friends. So today we need to finish making our pouch. I already folded it for you, friends, and added those holes because I didn't think that many of you would have hole punchers at home, but we need to finish making the top flap, and we need to sew our handle on, and I'm going to teach you, friends, a fun way to do sewing with a new type of sewing stitch. So first thing first, this top part here, I need to fold it over like a flap to kind of close up the top part of my bag. And it's okay if it covers up some of your holes. Don't worry about that, my friends. Just fold it down. And personally, I like my bags to have more of a rounded kind of top flap. If you want to leave yours straight like this, you can. Or if you want to curve it, the best way to curve it is to make kind of a smiley curve, or the way that I like to draw it has it more of a frowny curve. But either way, I'm curving it to make those corners cut off. So now that I've curved it with my pencil line, I know that might be hard to see. I'll pull it a little closer for you, friends. I can go ahead and grab up my scissors, and I can cut right on that smiley or frowny curve, depending on which way you drew yours, my friends. I'll try my best to stay on my line. If I get a little bit off, of course, I can use my eraser to erase my extra little bit of pencil away from there. And just like that, I have my parfleche pouch made. So in order for our pouch to work and in order for us to be able to put things in it, we need to stitch up the sides, my friends. Now, I know many of my first grade friends know a running stitch. A running stitch looks like this. It goes in. And then it goes out, and it goes in. But this is not the kind of stitch 
that we need today, my friends. And the reason why is because this kind of stitch can easily fall out. So instead of doing a running stitch, today I'm going to show you, friends, how to do what's called a whip stitch. And a whip stitch goes around the edge and back up through. So I want my friends now to go ahead. We're going to open up our string all the way. I have two nice long ends, and I'm going to put them above my pouch. Okay, now as you can see, my string's already getting a little bit frayed. If you can, my friends, you might need to twist the end. You see how I'm holding and pinching and twisting? Or if you absolutely have to, you might have to lick your string. I know, that's really gross thinking about that right now, especially with everything going on. But if you are the only person touching your string, you are okay to lick it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, and I like to start from the back, my friends. So on my first hole, I'm holding my paper with one hand, and I have my string in the other. And I'm going to push my string through that first end. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to tie my string off. You don't have to do this part, my friends. And if you need an adult's help to do this first part, you can ask for some adult help. But I like to make just a simple little double knot. So there's my first knot that I tied. And I'll do the same knot again. I'll go over my long string and under it with that short little bit. And I have my scissors here, so in case I need to cut some of that away, like I don't want it very long, I can cut off that extra little bit. All right, now I need to find my long end of my string. And we're going to start our running, or not running stitch, silly Miss Craighead, my whip stitch today. So here's my string right now. It's on the front side of my pouch. I'm going to make it whip around the edge, and my end here is going to come up through the next hole above it. And I'm going to pull, 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 pull my string all the way through until it stops. So right now, I don't see any string on the front except for where I tied my knot. If you do see string on the front right now, that's okay. Just might mean that you went the different way from me, but that's okay. Now you'll start to see my running stitch on the second one, my friends. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to whip around to the back and push my string through to the front side of my pouch on the next hole above that one. And I'm going to pull, 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 pull my string all the way until it stops. So that's where you'll see our first whip stitch, my friends, after you've done your second stitch there. You can see how it kind of goes diagonally to the edge of your paper, and then it wraps around and again goes diagonally on the back side of your paper. You can see it there as well. And I'll keep going up to my last hole now. I'm going to whip around to the back and push it through to the front of my last hole up here. And, oh, my string's starting to fray again, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. If it frays a lot, again, you might need to twist it or lick it. All right, I pulled it all the way through. Not too tight that my paper will rip, but tight enough that there's no extra string. All right, so I'm going to pause there for a moment, my friends. Again, if you need to pause the video and catch up here, you can. I'm not going to show you the next step just yet on the other side because I want yours to look like this side first, okay? So if yours doesn't look like that, you can take it out and try it again by rewatching those steps, okay? Again, if you need to pause here, you can. Now that I have the first side done, I need to work over to the other side. And this is where we're going to start to make the handle of our pouch. So if you notice, I'm bringing my string up above my pouch, kind of in like a letter N. If I was looking the other way, it might look like a letter U. So now I need to start here at the top hole. And once again, I'm going to start with my string by bringing it to the back and pushing it through that first top hole, pulling it through. But this time, instead of pulling it all the way through, my friends, like I said, I want to make that handle on top there that's nice and long. So watch, I'm only going to pull my string until it's a little bit longer than my pouch. So I'm adding a couple inches longer than my pouch, and I'm going to stop pulling there. That way, my pouch will have a nice long, long handle so I could actually use it and wear it if I wanted. All right, now I'm going to hold that string on the back now so I don't keep pulling it. And I'm going to keep going with my whip stitch. I picked my paper back up. I'm bringing it back around to the back side of my pouch. And I'm going to push it through the next hole going down this time. Again, if it's fraying, that's okay. Don't worry about it. And this time, because I'm holding it, I'm going to pull until it stops again. It should be a little bit longer than your pouches. Don't pull it all the way out, otherwise you'll lose all this nice handle, okay? 
Two more stitches, my friends. We're almost there. Again, I want to go to the back side of my pouch to the next hole, and I want to push my string through to the front and pull it. Again, not too tight, just until it stops. Again, my string is fraying a little bit now. That it's too much, I might need to twist it. Or again, if I'm the only person working with my string, I can lick it if that's something you need to do. Another option, my friends, is if you have tape at home, you can put a little tape around the end of your string to keep it from fraying as well, okay? All right, my last hole now here again, my last whip stitch, I'm gonna go to the back of my pouch and I'm gonna push it through that last hole to the front. Now, like I said, you don't have to tie it off, my friends, because watch this. If I pull on this string here, look at how it's not coming unstitched. And that's the great thing about a whip stitch, my friends, is that I don't have to tie that off now unless I want to because it won't come undone. I could swing this pouch all the way around everywhere and it still would not pull this out. Personally, though, I just like to tie my knots at the end because it makes me feel more secure. So I'll make my double knot down here at the bottom. Again, if you want to make knots, my friends, and you feel like you're struggling, that is a step that an adult can help you with, okay? And again, because I have my scissors nearby, I might just cut that little bit of extra off because I don't really personally like it. You can leave it if you want, though, my friends. And voila, we have our first step of our pouch done. We have made the actual pouch. We've cut our flap, and we've done our whip stitch around creating our handle, and now a closed pocket where we would be able to put things safely inside of our pouch. All right, my artists, that is all that we're going to be doing this week. Next week, when we pull these pouches back out, we're going to be looking at a piece of paper that shows us many different Native American symbols. These are different symbols that I personally collected from many different Native American tribes and these symbols have similar meanings to many different tribes. And we're going to use some of these symbols to help tell a story or tell about ourselves on our pouches starting next week. Again, next week is when you'll need your colors. So that way you can tell your story or a story using our different Native American symbols. For this week, please do not draw anything on your pouch yet. Just work on your sewing. All right, my artists, I look forward to seeing your pouches soon and helping you out during our live lessons with some of our whip stitch and talking about our different Native American symbols. For this week, you don't need to do anything in Seesaw. If you want to send me a picture of your sewing so I can see how you did, you can, but you don't have to because our art project is not finished yet. With that, I'll go ahead and say my goodbyes. And as always, my artists, have fun creating. <laughs>